Hello friends and welcome to Android implementations. In this video, we'll be going through a library called Butterknife. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this library or not, but it's been around for a very long time and it's a very common library. Uh, it's basically a view injection library. So all the code, the boilerplate code of dealing with your views, your resources and adding on click listeners has been abstracted and just with the annotation system, the library takes care of everything. So basically this library will run during the compile time and generate the code and inject it into the APK. So while development, you just have to deal with the apps, with the annotations. So the development has been brought to very, like it's very easy while developing and hence it's, it's very powerful. Um, also like just to keep you aware of like there are new things like data binding out right now, which also solves the same problem. I personally feel data binding. I'm very comfortable with that. But for a very long time, I've been using butter knife and it does all what you need. Um, so let's just go through this library and check out all its feature in an abstract manner. And then you can make a call. We'll definitely fo I'll follow up with another tutorial with for the data binding stuff. But you should you should know this, the features of this library for sure. Um, also in this video, I'll be showing you one of the plugin Android Studio plugin, which I use all the time. So this will also help you to decrease your development time, like like substantial amount. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and start with it. But before that, uh, I'll be showing some basic features of this library. But if you want to know more and read more about it, you can definitely anytime come and check it on jkwarden.github.io slash knife. So yes, this library is from JK Wharton. So let's just start. Uh, I, I already have a demo project ready with a layout. Like I, it has two text views and two buttons. And this is the activity. So to set up button knife in your application, just add these two dependencies in your Gradle file, com.jkwarton, button knife. So currently the latest version is 8.8.1. Uh, I'm not sure what is the latest version when you're watching this video. So you can get it from the official GitHub website or check out the Gradle, please. It will pop up the latest version. So this is all you have to just, I've already added the dependencies. Uh, you need to do this. Mm, also we'll stop here and I'll show you the plugin that I was recommending. Uh, I already have it in my installed, but I'll definitely want, I'll show you how you can get it. So sorry, plugin. Button knife. So yeah, this one it is. Uh, it's Android Button Knife Zelin Z. I'm not sure what that is, but yeah, I already have it installed. But if you don't, there'll be a green install button, and then I'll, it will ask you to restart. So just do that, and you will get the plugin. There are multiple other plugins over here, but I personally recommend this one. So I already have it. Let's just go ahead and start doing dealing with it. Uh, okay, so in my activity, so now like if in, in your traditional way, what you will be doing is like just go and have find view by ID and then R dot ID dot title text views and all these stuffs and then you will start dealing with your views. But if you are, if you are using butter knife, this can, as, as we know, it can be converted to an annotation based declaration. But if, if you want to use butter knife, the first thing is you need to initialize Button knife after every view inflation. Every as in if it is an activity after the set content view, if it is a fragment, do it in your on create view. So this needs to be initialized just after your layout layout has been inflated. Even if you're using dialogues, just inflate your dialogue and use the view object in the binding method of button knife. That is actually the initialization and all the all the processing is being done based on that method. So we'll do that over here. It's called button knife dot mind and then as the method shows it can have like activity view dialogue objects and everything so for us we can use this object and that will solve our problem that's that will do what we need so this activity whenever this layout has been inflated we just bind butter knife to this after this now let's just try and get the view object so we have two text views and two buttons so i just want my title text view so for button knife, you have to just add an annotation called bind view and declare 
and get the ID inside it. So it's called title text view. So after this, just declare the variable text view. It's called title text view. Uh, yeah, that's all. So with this declaration, after your whenever the binding method has been called, the ID, the object, the view object over here will be will be inserted and assigned to this variable. So if we just want to test it, we'll just add title text view dot set title set text and just add it as like this is my title and let's just run this. I hope this doesn't take a lot of time. So I have my emulator running here. Okay, cool. So we did get the object. So our binding is working perfectly. We got the title object over here and the title object has set the title to it. Yeah, that's exactly what you wanted. Uh, yeah, so dealing with your views is super simple. So right now we just have one text view. So just imagine when you have 20 text views and 30 text views, getting the object and then setting text views is, is really a pain. So this thing helps you a lot. But I would like to stop you here and we'll do the same thing with the plugin that that we have we have already installed so let's just delete all this and come back as fresh and to use the use the plugin that we have just right click go to generate and generate butter knife injections over here this is the dialog from that plugin and everything that we need is being explained here so right now let's just go ahead. I don't want the objects of my button, but I want to make the objects of the title text view and the subtitle text view. I check it. And at the bottom, you can see there are two options. The first one is like create view holder. If you check this, so if you're using like your recycler views or your base adapters, you just check mark this and it will, it will make your static class object with the view holder pattern. So that's just with a check marks, check box, you will get the whole view holder pattern. But I just want these text views and I confirm it. So that's all like this is what you need to do and the plugin will take care of the rest. So you have your binding view declaration over here. You have your two text views and let's just go ahead and like do the same set text. So this is title Just duplicate this line and add subtitle to it to the subtitle text view. Yeah, cool. So this is it and uh, it should run for sure but using that plugin you can def definitely like make this thing very quick and get your text views and like set variables to this so yeah this is your title this is title and this is subtitle so that's that's done so this was the very first part of like getting your objects your view objects to your variables this is the first step like and the second most common thing is to add on click listeners to your buttons or any any views so let's just go ahead and do that from with with the with the button knife library. If it is in a conventional way, you have to do is like find view by id r dot id dot button back button suppose, and then you set an on click listener to this or on long place whatever it is. But if you are using button knife, you have to you, you have to just use the annotation. So what you do is like create a method or whatever the method which you intend to use when the back button is clicked. So I'll just have like on back clicked so this is the method that i want to start that i want to execute whenever the button has been clicked um, all i have to do is just before this object i have to add an on click annotation sorry and in the method just declare the id of the button that i want so it's if it is back button the back so the next this method will be called whenever on click event is has occurred on the back button the source view object let's just add a toast to test it the context like this back click okay so with this let's just run it quickly and whenever you click on the back back button view we want this method to be evoked Perfect. So this is done. Now let's just do the same thing. Let me copy the 
tools. They just do the same thing with the plugin that we have installed. So they just delete this, go here. I'll just use the shortcut and generate button. Now we don't, uh, there's an object to like, there's an option to have the objects, but we don't want, I don't need the objects, but I need an on-click listener of back button, but I also need an on-click listener of next button. So I click both of it and I click confirm. Yeah, so that's all. So I, I get an auto-generated method of one view click. It's a generic naming convention. And then I get the multiple IDs, which have the on-click annotations with the switch case. So I write my on back code over here and on next button over here. That's it, it's sorted. It's it's so simple to have on-click listeners over on-click listeners on your view. But I'll show, like there's another feature, smart feature in this plugin where you just go in and generate this. You click on-click listeners and you have a split on-click method over here. So right now it's just two, but just imagine you had 10, 20 buttons and you don't want everything to be in one method and with a one switch case. So you don't want that. You want everybody to have different methods and you write your logic inside it. So just click the split on-click methods. You click confirm and you get two different methods which are doing like with the proper naming conventions and all that stuff. So this is the power of that plugin plus part of knife which like things are done super quickly for you. So let's just add next over here and we can run and test and I'm sure it, it will work perfectly fine. But again, let's let's just move ahead and uh, show like, it's not just like the on-click listener is the only annotation over here. They have a list of annotations that get solved, but the plugin supports only bind views and on-click because 90% of the cases, this is what normal developers or development is development usages so we we just get the objects and like bind the objects or we get the on click listeners but if suppose you just want to go ahead and have some different events so i'll just duplicate this method and instead of on next button click i'll write on next button long click so i want to just like tap uh, track the on long click event for this button so you have to just change the annotation to on long click and that's it so it's gonna take care so next long click is what the method that i'm evoking uh, we'll definitely run this and uh, check how it's going I'll, I'll definitely recommend oh sorry we need to return so i've consumed that stuff so we'll just run this I'll definitely recommend to go to the website and get a list of all the annotations. Uh, let's just test this and then I'll, this is back click, this is long next click and let's just long presses and you get long next long click. So yeah, everything is super easy. Definitely like spend some time like on these annotations, you have on check change listener, which will be like, if you have your check boxes you'll have to uncheck change listeners the toggle buttons all the compound buttons come into this section if you have list view it uh, it will have on item click listeners on item click on item long click on item selected there's a there's a long list i'll definitely like recommend you to spend some time over here and this will help you in in rare events also such annotations will help you to like speed up your development cycle um yeah this is this is the most of the part of of button knives button knife but again like it doesn't stop here i as i mentioned like you can like dealing with your resources is also a part of like binding your resources is also what button knife provides you so just like i have a text over here it's like this is title let's just move it to your resources uh, value dot strings and okay title string let's name it properly when you're going and this is the title. So I need to get this title and set it up to your, to this text view. So just to do that, uh, it's, it's just similar. Let's just duplicate this line. And instead of having bind view, you can write bind string and mention the ID of the string over here. It's called string dot title string and string dot title. So, that's that's all it's gonna the button knife is gonna take care of it 
and it will get the value of r dot string dot title into this variable and you can directly use the same over here and it's it's sorted it's not with string also you can like i'll you can do it i'll just show you over here you can bind string you can bind colors to it so it will be like you have to just mention a color dimension over here and it's going to take care for it uh bind dimension is one of it where you get to know the float values of any dimension that you declare bind drawable is the best part like if you have any drawables that are that are in your resource files just use this temp use this binding and it's going to take care of it uh yeah so i guess that's that's all that i wanted to convey through this video definitely go ahead and use it if you have not used it uh and uh, just to make aware there's there's a newer version which was out a uh, few months ago so make sure that you have used both the older version and the newer version new version is very very powerful it has good massive updates um definitely check this out uh yeah that's that's all that i wanted to convey uh go ahead use it if you have if you have any doubts like just drop a comment and i'll get back to you in the best possible way um yeah if you have any suggestions on the videos or if you want me to if you want to recommend any topic which i which you want me to take to make tutorials for i'll just just drop it into your comments and leave your feedback uh that's it uh, all the best guys happy development sorry happy coding okay bye